Last month, we introduced you to Ashley Lund Vol, otherwise known as Ms. Wheelchair Wyoming and Ms. Wheelchair USA. Lund Vol has been paralyzed since the age of 15 as the result of an accident she had while feeding livestock. She's a wife, mother, and big game hunter. Now, those may sound like typical life activities, but for someone like Ashley, they require far more experimentation and adaptation than most of us. She blogs about her experiences so other women in chairs don't need to feel as if they're reinventing the wheel. Our producer, Steve Costin, caught up with her while she was speaking on the University of Wyoming campus. So this is the crown that I was given um, after I won the title of Miss Wheelchair USA. And no, I do not hunt in it. Um, like I said, my buddies like to tease me about spray painting it orange and, and taking it hunting, but it is a little noisy. It's actually a lot of fun um, to wear. I tease ladies when they say, oh, I love your crown. And so I wear it when I do my laundry and things like that, you know. <laughs> but um, it is a lot of fun. Um, it, not that the wheelchair doesn't usually catch people's eyes, but when you throw the wheelchair and the camo and the crown together, usually it's like crowds of people are staring. And so it gives me a good opportunity to talk to people about why I'm wearing it, that I'm not just wearing it because I enjoy wearing it, you know, that there's a reason behind it and a title behind it and things like that. But the nice thing about the Miss Wheelchair USA pageant is that when you go back the following year to crown the new winner, you don't give them your crown, you crown them with their own crown. And so the nice thing about that is that they don't strip you of your title and your crown, that you're able to continue with all those opportunities speaking long after your one year reign is, is officially over. And so it does a couple things. Again, it gives you the opportunity to continue speaking and spreading your platform and whatever your message is, but it also builds the family and continues to um, allow you to meet other, other ladies that are in wheelchairs, as well as not any two people are gonna have the same platform. And so mine is accessible outdoor recreation and the next winners may be something completely different. And so that way we're not squelching one person's platform, we're just adding to other issues that people think are important enough to talk to others about. And so that's the nice thing about not having to give your crown up other than the fact that you like to keep it, <laughs> is that you do grow that, grow that family and grow the opportunity to share with more people about disability related issues and, and what these ladies find important. So after I won my title in July, they started thinking about the marketing aspect of the fact that I love to be outdoors and particularly enjoyed hunting because that was just kind of unusual and unheard of. And so um, Lowry Lockhart, who's the director of the Dane Foundation that sponsors Miss Wheelchair USA, came up with the idea to do this crown and camo tour. That's what they were gonna call my speaking tour. And so right away, I mean, the marketing ideas were just, you know, multiple and ingenious. But one of the things I had always wanted to do was to start some type of a blog that would allow me to share my experiences of being in a wheelchair over the last 15 years. And so um, I came up with the blog and we used the Crown and Camo title. And on that, not only am I able to share about all my speaking experiences, but I'm able to share about things that I've experienced that we just had to figure out on our own. Um, traveling, when I got married, when I decided to have a baby, all of these things that no one was able to talk to me about because I didn't have another female to talk to that was in a chair. And so again, we just made things up and, and, and it worked, but we had so many problems along the way that could have been solved if I had had someone to talk to that knew what I was going through and could give me good advice. And so that was part of why the blog came about was to give me kind of a, a, a national audience per se to share experiences that I've been through that maybe will help someone else that either has a new injury or has been in an accident recently so that they don't have to go through some of those struggles that I did and that they can have those answers and have someone to ask questions to and have someone to, to bounce ideas off of and things like that. And so it's been a great opportunity for me to be able to feel like I'm reaching a larger audience even if I can't go and visit with that person. Maybe they can read my blog or Google something about you know being in a wheelchair and having a baby and my, my blog might pop up and so they can read about my experiences and maybe get some information or have someone to ask questions to that they um, can experience it in a little bit better way than just making things up like we did. And so the blog's been really good to, to be able to allow me to reach people in that way. I always come back to my platform which is like I mentioned about accessible outdoor recreation. I think that um, people in wheelchairs or, or anyone with a physical disability the outdoors can be a scary place. And I know it was for me after my accident. And it was sad because the outdoors had always been a haven for me, something I had enjoyed. And I felt like that was just one more thing that was taken away from me after my accident. And so letting people know that the outdoors does not have to be scary. It does not have to be inaccessible. And all of the ways that you can still enjoy the outdoors despite your disability is something that I love to talk to about people. And then just having the right attitude is something that I can talk to no matter what audience I'm speaking with no matter what age group I'm speaking with, because that was something that I personally struggled with after my accident. And 
on the outside, you would have thought, oh, she's handling this so well, and she's such a happy, inspiring person. But on the inside, I had a lot of bitterness and a lot of anger about what had happened. And so even though someone doesn't necessarily have an accident like mine, everyone has experienced loss. Everyone has experienced something in their life that feels like things were taken from them. And so my, my message to people is there seems to be this attitude in the, in the disability community that you have to beat your disability by being exactly like you were before and doing everything exactly like you did before. And in my mind, sometimes it takes more courage to let go of the old dreams that you had that you don't even really recognize anymore in order to pursue new dreams. And so um, I think that that's something across the board that people can relate to and understand. So being able to be that person for other young women that is able to answer those questions from a personal standpoint, look them in the eye and say, I know what you're going through because I was there. This is what it's gonna feel like. This is what you're gonna experience. Maybe you should try this. You talk about adaptive equipment with hunting. We made up adaptive equipment when I had my daughter. I mean, the, the right crib. I tell people, get a baby doll that weighs about eight pounds and go to Babies R Us and try stuff with this baby doll. See if you can lift it in and out of the crib. See if you can use this changing table or this um, swing or this stroller, you know, try it. There's no, it's not like you can go borrow somebody's baby. <laughs> so grab a baby doll that's the right weight or something like that. Or, you know, just things like that where you can practice in a way about how you're gonna do things and, and know that you're gonna have to be, you know, adaptable and things like that. But being able to answer those questions, I just had a lot of fear because there was no one to answer the questions for me. There was no one to tell me what it was gonna be like or feel like or how I was gonna take care of my daughter. And so again, we just made things up as we went. I got through you know, surviving, not killing her that first year, rolling over or anything crazy like that. And then I wanna take her to the playground. So I get to the playground and there's no parking. Or I get to the playground and it's wood chips and try to chase a two-year-old around on a playground with wood chips on the floor you know, and things like that. And the playground itself is not accessible, so I'm not interacting with her. I'm literally chasing her from the bottom of one slide to the other. And you see all these other moms climbing up in the playgrounds with their kids, and I'm sitting there not able to experience it. So that's actually a project we're working on in Cody right now, is we are going to be the first um, playground, fully accessible, barrier-free, wheelchair-friendly playground in like seven states. And we're going to be the first one in Wyoming and the first one in, in like seven states out here throughout the West that's going to have this fully accessible playground. And so things like that that you don't even think about, about being outdoors, that again, you take for granted when you're able to do it until you can't. And then you're, a, you're just a, someone on the sidelines watching because you feel like you can't fully participate. And so that's just another thing about not only being a mom, but then, you know, how do I take her to the grocery store? How do I put her in a cart and push her around? How do I do all those daily activities that you think about and then throw a kid on top of it? And it's a whole nother ball game. You know, how do I go to the doctor? How do I take her to the doctor? You know, those are two separate things. And, you know, playing outside for me is a lot of fun, but then how do I go and play with her? And how do I interact with her and things like that? And so, again, there's just so many things that I'm still constantly dealing with on a daily basis that I'm just figuring out as I go. And so being able to share that with other people and, and then finding out, oh, how'd you do it? Oh, well, that's a lot easier. I wish I'd done it that way, you know? And so then being able to go back and share that with other people too. There's just this community out there that, um, of people that are going out and doing things. And so if they're able to share that with other folks to, to give them the courage to go out and do it as well, I think there'd be a, a, a lot, a lot of, of happiness and a lot of um, change in attitude that would be spread throughout the disability community.